Okay, here we go. Lenses. We've already talked about mirrors and how they reflect light. Okay, so maybe if I just write that to remind you, mirrors reflect light. They bounce light, right? But lenses are materials that are transparent, that light can go through. But since light goes through them and they are made of different materials, we've seen that when light passes through different materials, it changes its speed, which causes the waves to bend. So lenses refract light, the bending of light. Now, the nice thing about lenses is all of the rules that we learned about mirrors, curvy mirrors, you know, parallel to the principal axis and through the focus and all of those things, they still apply. So most of the rules are, are very similar. So we don't have to learn everything from scratch, but we do have to sort of adapt it to the concept of bending light rather than reflecting off a mirror. So let's just, first of all, how do you, how do you get a lens? Well, a lens can be any material that's different, that's transparent. So basically lenses are transparent. That's kind of important. Light passes through them. Okay. And there's two basic kinds of lens. There's lenses that cause light to converge. So just like a mirror, there's what we call a converging lens. And basically, to be a converging lens, you have to have a certain shape. The shape you have to have is sort of fatter in the middle and skinnier on the ends. So in physics and in optics, we use a very, very specific kind of picture to show that. But, whoops. Sorry about that. Uh-oh, what did I just do? How do I change that back? Oh, well, we won't worry about it. What we do is we draw a converging lens. Let me put a little title here. So we, we have what we call uh, the principal axis, just like we had with mirrors. The principal axis is our, our sort of middle of the lens. Okay. And then what the lens looks like is it's sort of fat in the middle and like this. It looks like a converging mirror, but it's got two sides to it. So you see how it's fat in the middle and skinnier on the ends. And this is usually how we draw converging lenses when we're doing them in physics. Okay, now, what happens when light goes through Let's say this lens. Let's say we're going to make this lens made of glass. So this, this I'm going to put glass down here. Glass lens. So all around the, the glass lens is air. So let's imagine what would happen to a light ray. I'll just pick a red line here. If I had a light ray that was heading into this lens, right? Um, going in like this, parallel to the principal axis. Well there's going to be refraction. As it goes through the lens, it's not going to go straight through. It's going to bend. So to figure out the bend, what we would have to do is sort of like, you know, zoom in on this little point and draw a normal to the curve, which would sort of look something like that. And then this light ray would bend. Now, the air is less dense than the glass. So if we're going from less to more dense, the rule is you refract towards this normal line. So the red line would bend sort of down a little bit. Oops. It would bend down a little bit like that instead of going straight through because you see how it's bending towards the normal line. In other words, the angle over here is bigger than the angle in here. It's a slightly smaller angle. That's the rule of refraction. But now what's interesting is when you get to the other side of the lens, you're changing your medium again. The light is now passing from glass back into air, right? And so if we draw a little normal line on this side, I'll draw it Okay, the normal line is perpendicular to the surface, so it's sort of like this. Well, now what happens is 
when you go from the more dense glass to the less dense air, the rule is you bend away from that normal line. So now uh, you would have to, you know what I'm going to do? I just realized I'm going to take that off and I'm going to draw it again with a smaller line because it's a little bit crazy. So let me just draw that. There's the normal perpendicular to the lens, just like the other red line there. Now, how will it bend? Well, it will have to, it won't bend, it won't go this way, right? That's going towards the normal, so that wouldn't be right. It's going to bend away from the normal, which means it's going to bend even further down and go like that. So there's kind of like an initial bend in, because it's going from less dense air to more dense glass, towards the normal. But on the other side, the normal is kind of pointing the other way, and so now there's another bend. This time it's away from the normal, but it's just, it, it makes it bend even further. So you can see how the lens is bending the light. And what's interesting is, if I start drawing light rays, uh, what happens is, because of the shape of the lens, there's sort of more bending near the edges than there is in the middle. Because the edges are curved more. If I drew another line, say, down here, right? Let me just make that thinner. Without drawing all the normals and all of that, we could see how it would first bend a little bit this way and then bend a little bit more. And it would shoot up like that. Because it's the opposite. If I drew all the normal lines in and followed the rules, that's what we would get. If I drew a line, what if we had a ray of light coming right in here along this axis? If it hits here, right at the edge, well, what's interesting is the normal is the same line. The normal line at that point, if I were to take a blue ink here and draw the normal, well, the normal is just coming right back out along here like this. So there's no angle, which means there's no refraction, which means that line would pass right through the lens like this without bending because there's no angle. And you're noticing on the other side of the lens, something interesting is happening. All of the light rays are bending in such a way that they are all converging on this spot, which of course is what we call the focus. So just like a mirror has a focus or a focal point, the lens also has a focal point. Now, the, the tricky part about lenses is because they have two sides to them, Right? Both sides of the lens are in the real world. Okay? You remember with mirrors, one side is sort of mirror land or virtual, but this is the real world on this side of the lens. And when the light goes through the lens over here, this is also the real world. Right? And so it's a little bit trickier to keep track of what we mean by real and virtual images and things like that. But we're going to sort all that out once we get the hang of these lenses and how they work. Okay, so that's a converging lens. It causes light that comes in on one side to converge to a focus on the other side. Simple? So far, so good. The lens also has a center of curvature, right? Which would be, um, well, we'll get to that in a minute, but right now we're just going to talk about focus. So that's what a converging lens does. Now let's talk about the other kind of lens, which is a diverging lens, before we get too crazy with all the different possibilities. So let me just move down here. We'll draw a big line across here. The diverging lens. What does it do? Well, you can guess what it's going to do. In order to be a diverging lens, you have to be thinner in the middle and thicker on the outside. So a diverging lens, and again, we draw it a sort of a special way. We draw a curve like this. Okay, uh, so we draw like this, and then we're going to draw over here another curve like this, and then join them up. So this is a very funny shape, like a, kind of like an hourglass shape of glass, right? And again, I'll, I'll write down below that this is a glass lens, just for, so to remind us that this is a different substance than the air. 
OK. Well, let's see what happens when light goes through this kind of lens. So I'll take my red line, and I'll draw a light ray. And if I draw it here at the top, it's going to go up like this. Don't Actually, let me go a little bit lower. OK. Well, if we play our little game of drawing the normal, which is perpendicular to the curve, so it's going to sort of be something like this. Right? There's my normal line, perpendicular to the curve at that point. Well, I'm going from less dense air to more dense glass. I have to bend towards the normal, which means my red line has to bend a little bit up. Like that. Instead of going straight, it bends slightly up. But then I get to the other side of the lens, where I hit another boundary, right, where the light can go through. So let's get a black line here. Oops. And let's imagine what the normal would look like here. Well, it would sort of be this way. There's the other normal line, right, at that point. Now, here I'm going from more dense glass, because now the light rays in the glass, right? But now it's coming out into the less dense air, so it now would have to bend away from that normal line, which means it will bend even more away, more up like this. So you can see that in the diverging lens, instead of being sort of bent down towards the principal axis, you get bent out and away. And of course, if I do this all over the place and I draw one here, it gets bent a little bit away and then it gets bent you know, more away like that. And if I go straight in here, it's just like the other one. The, the normal is right back on itself. So it goes straight through the middle of the lens without any refraction at all. Now, these rays do not converge. That's why it's called a diverging lens. It spreads out the light rays, which means they diverge. But we have learned our brains do a weird thing with diverging light rays. When an eyeball picks up these diverging light rays, here's an eyeball looking at this scenario from this side. These, these light rays all appear to have come from somewhere, don't they? They appear to have come in a straight line from somewhere behind the lens. So in blue, I'm just going to extend those rays backwards. This one goes back like this. This one goes back like this. And this one, well, this one came from right where it came from, back like that. And look, if we imagine where they came from, we see a spot where they do seem to focus. Now, this is called the focus, right? This is the focus, or the focal point in green here, focus. But what's interesting is it's a virtual focus. And this is weird because it's still in the real world, sort of, but not really. On the picture, it looks like this is in the real world. But the only way you could see this focus is if you were an eyeball on this side and it would look like it was sort of inside the lens. You couldn't step out, walk around the back like this and look over here and see this happen because there are no real light rays here. These blue rays are not light. They're just imagined places where the light seems to have come from. So there's nothing actually happening over here on this side of the mirror. But it's, it's sort of an illusion that the eyeball has to be on the opposite side to see. And you would look into the lens, and you would see, almost like looking into a mirror, you would see a virtual image appearing in the lens, right inside the lens, as you looked in there. So the lens sort of, sort of functions kind of like a mirror. And we'll talk about those, those differences as we go. OK? So a diverging lens makes what we call virtual images whereas the converging lens can make actually both, as we'll see. But that's the main idea. All we have to know right now is that converging lenses make light rays bend inwards, right, so that they come to a focus, and diverging lenses make light bend outwards. And so the only way to get a focus is to imagine where they might have come from. 
and get a focus like that. That's all we need to know so far to understand the two. Now, remember we talked about the old words or the words that are more traditional? In traditional uh, lens language, this is called a concave lens. But it's, it's kind of confusing because it's not really concave. Concave means caved in, right? But what we're talking about are the inside edges. So uh, this edge inside here is a concave edge when you look at it from this side. And this is a concave edge when you look at it from that side. So it's a little bit weird. That's why I don't like to really use these terms, even though they're traditional terms, because they do offer confusion. So converging lens is pretty much confusion free. Now, the other thing is this one, which diverging lens. Traditionally, in, in traditional language, it's called a convex lens. But when you look at it, it looks more concave because you see this region right here looks caved in. But we're looking at it, we're defining it as if we were looking at it, sort of looking at it from this side. That's a convex edge, right? And then when you look at it from inside the lens here, you have a convex edge as well. So you can see now why those words are confusing. But using the words converging and diverging is much more clear. But of course, in the world of science, you'll meet a lot of people who say convex and concave. So you kind of have to get used to that. Okay. All right. Now we're going to make a simplification. Always nice to simplify things a little bit in the way we draw the pictures. And what we're going to do is we're going to learn about something called the optical center of the lens. So here's my converging lens, right? And of course, I can also over here do the diverging lens at the same time because it works for both of them. And we saw that if, if a light ray comes in, it's going to bend, bend, and bend. Three like, sort of like three different light rays. What we can do is we can average out or we can sort of add up the two bends and just draw a line down the middle of the lens. So what we do is we draw a line down the middle. My lens is a little off, so my line is going to look a little bit crooked. This little imaginary line, it's not a normal, and it's not a principal axis. It's called the optical center. Opti whoops, we better write that again. Optical center. center, the optical center. And it's kind of just a way to, instead of drawing all these bends like this, what we do is we just average them out. So we draw, a, even though this isn't really what happens, we draw a light ray straight to the optical center, and then we put both bends in at once and just bend it once. This is a more of a convenient way to draw the lenses. So it's a shortcut. It takes these two bends and it makes them into one bend at the optical center. It's kind of like sort of the overall effect of the two bends, okay? And the same thing over here. We could go across here. Whoops, let me go down a little bit lower. We could go in here, diverge a little bit, and diverge a little more. See, two bends at each interface. Two bends, light bends whenever it moves from one substance to another. But it's easier to draw a line straight to the optical center and then add both bends together and draw them as one bend. And so this is the way we will be drawing our diagrams. We'll be using the optical center of the lens and just drawing one bend that represents the two refractions at either boundary. Does that make sense? It's pretty simple, eh? Okay, so now all we have to do is explore the different possibilities of pictures and what we might get and how we have to adapt those rules about rays in mirrors to adapt them to lenses. Okay, so this won't take too long. Let's look at the, the concave or the converging lens first. It's the one I think that'll have the most different pictures. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm gonna draw this now with a principal axis. I'll try and draw this uh, as straight as I can. It's very hard to use a ruler on this board. 
but I'm going to put the lens here in the middle. I'm going to try to draw the lens as symmetrical as I can and as straight up and down as I can. So there's my principal axis, right? We know that from before, so I'll just call it PA, the principal axis. Same as for mirrors. It's just a reference line. But we're also going to add in here the optical center of the lens right down the middle. So we'll call that the optical center. Right? That's our line for just kind of averaging out the bends. Now, we know that this lens is going to have a focal point. And we know that it's a converging lens, so we know that the focal point will be on the opposite side of the lens. That's important to remember. If my light comes in this way, my focal point will be over here on this side of the lens. But if my light goes in this way, my focal point will be on this side of the lens. So you see, it all depends on which way we want to go. But the important thing to remember is that the focus is always on the opposite side of the lens because that's where the light converges. It's on the opposite side of where the object is. That's what you have to remember. Okay? So let's just go with the black picture. Let's go with, let me erase the red. And let's just go with this and say that we're going to have some light coming this way. So we're going to draw um, an object over here. So I'll put the focus back in. So there's my F for focus. And of course, then what we can do is we can determine the center of curvature, which will be, if you look at the optical center, if you look at from here to here, that's how far the focus is away from the lens. We want to match that for the optical, or for, sorry, for the center of curvature. That's kind of important. So now I have to erase that line I drew because I don't want that to mess up our picture. So just make sure that those look like they're about the same distance away. Okay. Now rule number one for mirrors was, I'm not going to write the rules again because they're in the other lesson, but I'll, I'll, I'll say them. A, a ray of light that's parallel will, ref, will ref, uh, reflect, for mirrors, through the principal axis, right? Or through the focus. Let me say that again. A ray of light parallel to the principal axis will reflect on a line through the focus. Well, here it's the same thing. A ray of light that is parallel to the principal axis will refract through the focus. Okay? So first let's draw in green a little object. Now, when we're talking about distances, because the lens has, has two sides to it, I, I'm going to draw over on this side the focal point as well, just as measurements, right? Just so we can keep track of where the object is. And I'm going to place an object out here beyond C. And the object I'm going to use, just like before with the mirrors, is a little arrowhead because it has a nice easy top and bottom. And we're not going to worry. We're, I made it thicker so we don't confuse it with our light arrows. Okay. So a ray of light, which I'll now draw in, in, uh, in red for rule number one. Remember, the light comes in and it hits, it hits the top of the arrow from somewhere. So we're not going to draw the incoming light that's hitting the arrow. But after it hits the arrow, it's going to bounce towards the lens. And you can see that it's going towards the lens to the principal axis, parallel to the principal axis. The rule is it must refract on a line through the focus. So we know that it will converge down here on a line going through the focus, like that. <coughs> That's rule number one. Now we know not to use this focus over here because that would mean it would have to bounce backwards, and that's reflecting, and that's not what happens to light when it goes through a lens. It bends, it doesn't bounce. So we know that that's not the focus we have to use. That's there just to identify where the object is. The true focus that we want is on the other side, and converging lenses will have a focus on the opposite side as the object. Now, what about another rule? What if we take rule number two in blue? Rule number two was the opposite. It said, well, what if a ray goes through the focus? Well, then it must, in for mirrors, it would reflect parallel, remember, to the principal axis. 
So it's the same thing here. If I draw a line that bounces from the tip of this arrow and goes through the focus and hits, that should have been a straight line. My finger is not so straight. But it hits here. In fact, I'm going to try that again because that's better. Okay. It should then refract parallel to the principal axis, which means it would refract sort of straight across over here like this. Um, whoops, that's not very straight. Let's try that again. Maybe about there. And this is kind of messy here where I did this. When you do it, try to make it nice and clean. Otherwise, you'll get pro problems. Okay, so that's the two rules, number one and rule number two. Which means I now know where the top of the arrowhead is. Over here, I'll do it in purple, must be the top of the arrowhead. Because that's where the two lines meet. And just like in mirrors, if you're on the principal axis, all of the rules will end up along the same line. So the bottom of this arrow has to be on the principal axis because all of the rules will produce a ray that's going straight through and staying on the principal axis. So we know from here then that the, that the object is going to be like this. Now, there are some other rules we could apply if we needed to. I didn't show them. This is just rule one and two. Um, there was a rule about what happens when you go through the center of curvature, right, for mirrors. Um, I, I can't really draw that on here because a light ray through the center of curvature isn't going to hit, isn't going to hit anywhere. So we'll save that rule for later. But there is another rule. If you pass right through the, the vertex of the lens, which is the spot right in the middle where the principal axis meets the optical center. If you pass through there, what happens is, on the way in, you get a bend one way, this a little bit down, but then on the way out, you get a little bit of a bend up. Whoops. So what happens, let me just draw, maybe in this, um, maybe some other color. How about this little orangey color? Let's try that. Okay, don't draw this yet, but what happens is the light comes in and it bends a little bit downwards, but then over here it bends a little bit upwards. And it, the two bends actually cancel each other out, and the overall effect is a line that doesn't actually bend at all. I didn't draw that very well because it should go right through there. If you had a ruler, that's how it would work. So it looks like there's no bending at all here, but what's really happening is there's a bend one way and then there's an equal bend the other way that sort of cancels it out. Okay? And so when you pass through the vertex of a lens, you just keep on going with no bend. And you can see that if you use this rule, you'd end up in the same place as well. And so you only need any two of these rules. You don't need to worry about um, you know, all three. All you need is any two of these in order to, to see where you're going or to see where the object would be. And then, of course, just like in the mirror, we can describe the characteristics of this, the characteristics. Uh, so, for instance, this one is uh, its position. It's between F and C, right? The, the, uh, the, Im the image, the purple image. So really, this is a, the title of this would be Object Beyond C. That's where we started with the green arrow, Beyond C, out past C. But the characteristics of the purple image are between F and C. We also see it's inverted. It's upside down as opposed to upright, right? That was the other thing. Um, it's actually a little bit smaller. I know my picture doesn't show that very well, but if you did this with a nice ruler and everything, it would actually come out to be just a tad smaller. Generally speaking, uh, images like this, as you get closer to the lens, they tend to get smaller and they get bigger the further away you get, right? So, and then uh, we also have to think about real and virtual. So this is where it gets tricky. 
you can't really go by what side it's on. It's more confusing that way. So the best way to decide is this. If real light rays are crossing, then it's a real image. If virtual light rays, which are the ones that are imagined by an eyeball to come from somewhere inside, these blue lines in the picture up here in this area, those weren't real. There's no real light there. That was what an eyeball imagines. In other words, dotted or dashed lines. Then that's a virtual image. This image is real. You could put a screen or a piece of paper or something right at this spot. And whatever you saw, whatever the green arrow looks like, you'd see a picture of it upside down over there as the light goes through the lens. And that's how we draw the pictures using the rules. Okay, I'll do one more faster just to kind of show you. And then I'm going to leave you with the, with the challenge of drawing all the different positions. And I think what we'll do then is we'll do the diverging lens in a separate lesson so we don't get them all confused. So let's take, so the next, the next position would be what happens if I move my object here a little bit closer and I put it right on C. That would be the next. So remember our spots are beyond C, which is out here, at C, which would be right on the C, between C and F, right on the F, and then inside F. Those are all of our different locations, right? So let's do one, one more, kind of fast. Okay, we'll draw our principal axis, like that. We'll draw our lens. I'll try and draw it as symmetrically as I can. I will place a focal point and a center of curvature. Now, when you do this, don't measure the focal point from there. Measure it from the uh, line down the middle, the optical center. That's the sort of reference line that we're using. Okay, so when you measure it, your, your focus, you want your focus now to be about the same distance away. So somewhere about here, there's your focus. This is your C, your center of curvature. And you can put it on both sides because you're going to need that. So try to get the same distance on the other side, focus, and the same distance again for C. Let's put an object right on the C this time. Actually, no, maybe we'll do a different one because that's a tough one to do without a ruler. I can do another one that, that's a little bit safer. Let's call this one object between C and F. Let's see what happens if we put it there. So I'll take my green and I'll put a picture of, a, of an arrow sort of here. Like this. Um, maybe a little bit smaller or a little bit over just because I want my picture to work. I don't want to run out of lens. I think that'll work. Okay. Let's do rule number one in red. We'll draw a, a, a ray of light that leaves the tip of the arrow and it goes straight across parallel to the principal axis and hits the optical center. This is a converging lens. So this will bend downwards and go down towards the focus like this, through the focus. So that's easy, rule number one. I know not to use this focus because it's not going to bounce. This is not a mirror, right? It's a lens. Okay, let's do rule number two in blue. Let's go through the focus, down to there, maybe a little thinner. And then when that shoots across, it's going to go across parallel, so way out here. And this little spot should be out past C. So if it's not, your sketch is, is too rough. You've got to sort of make sure your sketch looks good. And you can see what's happening now. They're crossing in a different spot. So my ob object, the green object is over there, but now look what happens here. There's where the tip of the arrow would be, where they cross, and there's where the arrow would look. The bottom is always on the axis because all the rules from the bottom of the arrow follow the principal axis. And now I have this image and we can see that what I have is an image that is 
uh, beyond C, beyond C, and we also can see that this image is still inverted, still inverted. We can see that it is um, bigger this time, so larger image instead of a little bit smaller. And it's found by two real rays of light, so it's a real image. It wasn't found by imagining where light came from. Got it? Okay. So I guess maybe we could do one more, just one more. That means just less for you to have to figure out. Because I want to show you what happens when it's really close. This is going to be interesting. Let's take one more example. Draw my lens. Okay, and I'll put my optical center down the middle. And I'll make my focal point here. And my center of curvature there. And I'll do the same on the other side, about the same distances. Make sure those are very close. If they're off, the whole picture gets a little wonky. Now I'm going to take my object and I'm going to put it right in here, inside F. And I'm going to make it fairly small. Let's see what happens now. Well, if I draw my first rule, I get a line that goes parallel. Oops, I want to do that thinner. Okay, we get a line that goes parallel, and of course it will bend and refract through the focus. So that part looks the same as before. Not much has changed. That's a little bit wonky, that line. I'm going to try again. Keep my lines straight. There, that's a little better. Now here's a problem. I can't get a ray of light going through the focus. Or can I? Well, a ray of light going through the focus would have to go backwards, wouldn't it? To go through my focal point over here on a line through the focus. Let's go back to our other picture and see what happened here. This ray of light going through the focal point. See? So I have to now, I have to imagine that I put a ruler on here and my ruler is lined up between the top and there. That's my ruler, okay? You don't have to draw this as a line. But now my ray is going to go on that same line up to here. So the rule is not going through the focus. The rule is a ray on a line through the focus. Remember that. So here we can just line them up and extend this ray. And it will still go parallel straight out like this. Interesting. See how we did that? Just like with the mirrors, you're always on a line through the focus or you're on a line that's parallel to the principal axis. And you might not actually pass through the focus as long as you're lined up with it. It's the same thing. So this ray went this way. Right? These rays are going this way and this way. But it's still lined up with the focus. So it still follows that rule. Now here's the problem. They don't cross on the other side of the lens. All right, so what would happen? What would an eyeball see? Well, let's draw a little eyeball to remind us that we have to think about the human eye and how it works. Well, it would imagine those light rays came from somewhere in a straight line behind them. So let me take my blue and extend them backwards as dotted lines because these are not real light rays. Well, where do they cross? They cross here. So, well, purple for my, my, uh, my image. This is where I would find my image. So an eyeball wouldn't see the green. If, if you were an eyeball looking through this lens, and on the other side of the lens there's that little green object, you wouldn't see the little green object at all. You would see the, the rays of light that were red be bent, and you would imagine those rays came in a straight line, and what you would actually see is the purple image. Now think about this. 
when's the last time you looked through a lens at something that was kind of small, like that green object, and what you saw was actually a bigger version of it? What do we call that? A magnifying glass. When you look through a magnifying glass, you're looking through a glass lens, but you don't see what's on the other side. That's weird. You don't see that at all. It's not like when you look through here, you see two little pictures, a green one and a purple one. All you see, all the eye sees is the purple image. It's fooled by the bending of light because the eye always thinks that light came in a straight line. So it thinks the light is coming from here and it sees nothing of this at all. And all you see is this larger image. If we, draw, if we write the characteristics down for this image, we see that it is, um, where is it? Well, it's between C and F, but that's really kind of awkward because it's on the, other, on the same side as, of, uh, as the object, right? Uh, it's larger, well, wait a minute, what was next? Uh, upright. The order doesn't matter, but I'm trying to keep it consistent. It's upside right this time, different. And it's much larger. And of course now, it's not caused by any real light rays. It's an illusion that the eye sees. So it's what we call a virtual image. And this is how a magnifying glass works. You stand over here on this side where the eyeball is. You hold your magnifying glass on a little handle with your hand and you look through the magnifying glass at the green object. But you do not see the green object. Instead, any light coming from the green object follows the red lines, gets spread out, and your eye thinks that they came from here, and so you now see the virtual image of a larger object. So that's how you have to use the rules sometimes, just like with the mirrors. You sometimes have to go backwards and figure out which way they're going to go. And so I will leave you then with the task of drawing the pictures of what happens when you put the object right at C or you put the object right at F. We've done the other three. Now remember, when you put it right at F, when we did it with the mirror, we got this weird thing with no image. So don't be surprised if something weird like that happens again. Okay, so we'll stop there and we'll do diverging lenses in another video.